Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading Chapter 4 from A Little Twirly Story of Candy by Deborah Ann Harkins and Tang Nguyen, illustrated by Sadhil Drummond. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the authors and Purple Owl Publishing for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 4 There's a sucker born every minute. 1869, David Hannam A History of the Birth of the Lollipop You probably noticed that we subtitled this A History of the Birth of the Lollipop rather than the birth of the lollipop. Well, that's because there are so many historical versions of the origins of the lolly, almost as many as the tongue licks in a lollipop. Although the saying, there's a sucker born every minute, is often attributed to the famous American circus showman, P.T. Barnum. No one really knows its origins. You'll discover here why this saying might just as easily have been said by someone trying to follow the story of the lollipop. Legend has it that the origins of lollipops, sometimes spelled lollipops, can be found on cave paintings of people licking sticks used to collect honey from beehives. Also, there's evidence that the ancient Chinese Arabs and Egyptians made candy fruit and nuts using honey and inserting sticks into the sweet mixture, thereby making it easier to eat. This sweet mix was originally used for preserving fruits and nuts rather than as a sweet treat. By the 17th century, as sugar from the Caribbean became more plentiful for the English, Sugar moved from simply being a medicinal base to something sweet to eat. Richardson, in his 2002 book, Sweets, A History of Candy, writes that the distinction between the medicinal and confectionery uses of sweets was blurred from candy's very beginnings, creating a sort of crisis for apothecaries. Richardson writes, that at the time, pharmacists were quite scornful of the confectioners, probably because the candy man could sell sweets to those looking for something tasty rather than something to simply cure an ill. Chinese candied fruit, Tangulu. The 16th century physician, Tabernay Monteus, claimed this of sugar candy. As a powder, it is good for the eyes. As a smoke, it is good for common colds. As flour sprinkled on wounds, it heals them. Pierre Palmet continues these claims in his book, A Complete History of Drugs, 1712, where he says, put into the eyes in fine powder, they take away their dimness and heal them being bloodshot, as they clean old sores being strewed gently upon them. Richardson, 2002. As described by Henry Weatherley in his 1864 book, A Treatise on the Art of Boiling Sugar, the English boiled sugar and inserted sticks into the sweet treat to make eating the sugary substance less messy. This boiled sugary treat on a stick marks the beginning of the first modern Sugar lollipop. Lollipop fact. Linguists say that the term lollipop literally means tongue slap, which we find hilarious since the word for tongue is lolly in Northern England and pop means slap. The London street vendor may have coined this term when bending the sweet delight. Although this was likely a soft rather than hard treat 
it is still considered A. By the mid-1800s, confectioners were selling their sweets on the streets, including rock, stick, lozenges, and candies, all made by boiling sugar. Many of the sweet sellers were also making these sweets in their cellars. By the time of the Civil War, hard candy was put on the tips of pencils for children. They loved the candy on a stick so much that in the early 20th century, automation technology created a lollipop manufacturing industry, who is considered the original creator of manufactured lollipops. Well, again, as it seems, with all of candy history, sucker origin stories abound. In the first sweet origin version, dating back to the 1800s, Arthur Spangler from Bryan, Ohio, was one of the first makers of chocolate to put a stick into the caramel candy he was making, probably for the same reason everyone before him did, to avoid packaging and causing a sticky situation in customers' hands. Around the same time as Spangler, George P. Smith of Brownlee Smith Candy Company in New Haven, Connecticut, decided to put a stick into the balls of caramel candy he was making. Keep your eyes out for George Smith, as we will hear more about him later in this candy story. Another candy birth legend involves the owner of the McCavaney Candy Company, who in 1905 is said to have stumbled upon the lollipop by accident. The company made boiled hard candies that were stirred with a stick. And at day's end, the owner brought the sticks covered with the candy home for his kids to enjoy. By 1908, McCavaney Candy began to market these used candy sticks. In 1908, the owner of the Racine Confectioner's Machine Company from Racine, Wisconsin, introduced a machine that placed a stick into hard candy at the rate of 2,400 sticks per hour. Owners believed they could produce enough lollipops, although they weren't called that yet, in a single week to supply the nation's demand for an entire year. They were called the All Day Sucker. And remember George Smith from earlier? Of the Brandley Smith Company. Well, he said, hey, we started the lollipop. Smith took credit for inventing the modern version of the lollipop, which began making in 1908. Hey, anyone else noticing how 1908 shows up again and again in these candy origin stories? Well, anyways, back to Smith. In 1931, Smith trademarked the term lollipop where legend has it that he used the name of a famous racehorse named Lolly Pop. For many candy historians, the naming and trademarking of candy on sticks as lollipops marks the origins of the lollipop. Hey, notice? The word lollipop connecting back to the 17th century phrase tongue slap, remember? Born Sucker Machine. By 1916, a Russian immigrant, Samuel Born, invented an automated process for inserting the sticks into the candy batch. And this machine was called the Born Sucker Machine, sweet name for a machine, eh? Anyway, the city of San Francisco considered this machine so creative that in 1916, they granted him the keys to the city. So, there you have it, lots of tongue lick slapper stories for the birth of the lollipop. But don't try to say that last line five times fast, or your tongue will be slapping faster than you can lick to the center of a lollipop. Hard candy family recipe. Ingredients, two cups water, four cups sugar, one teaspoon of citric acid, five drops of food coloring, 
Directions. 1. Mix sugar and water in a pot. 2. Boil the mixture to 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a candy thermometer to check. 3. Remove from heat. 4. Add food coloring and citric acid. 5. Put in mold, make small drops, or just let it cool. All Things Sugar Crossword Puzzle Feel free to pause this video so that you may complete this crossword puzzle activity. The answers will be at the end of this video. Lollipop History Thousands of years ago, honey was collected by using a stick to get honey and then licking the honey stick. 17th century English boiled sugar water for candy treats and put sticks to make them easier to eat. 1905, McAvaney Candy Company was stirring his hard candy mixture and would take the sticks covered in candy home to his children. By 1908, McAvaney sticks were being marketed as used candy sticks. 1908, Racine Confectionery Machinery Company introduced a machine that could put candy on the end of a stick, making up to 2,400 lollipops per hour. 1908, George Smith, owner of the Bradley Smith Company, started making candy sticks and trademarked the term lollipop in 1931. 1912, Samuel Bourne invented machine that put the stick into the candy and called it the Bourne Sucker Machine, to which Samuel earned the keys to the city of San Francisco. Here are the answers to the sugar crossword puzzle. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.